Okay, back with yet another GE Super Base. There to focus there, model 3-5875A. Um, of course you can see the, looks like the clutch style uh, clarifier control at some time was broken. Because um, they're just a regular potentiometer, or, potentiometer or pot and uh, Someone's just stuck, you know, like a Cobra 29 style chrome knob on there, but fully functional. I'll have to dig around, see if I can dig up a original two-piece clutch clutch style GE one. Um, customer wants this one. You know, he's, last one I just did had uh, I buffed out the face plate or the lens, and you can see this one is really gunky and dirty inside. So we'll get the. Uh, Faceplate taken off of this one and get that buffed up. And overall, it's you know, the cover is actually in very good condition, the metal cover. But uh, front, you can see all the dirt, how it's brown down in there. Knobs all brown in there, so we'll get all the knobs taken off. Dropped in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner, get them all cleaned up. Interior actually doesn't really look like it's been tinkered with. Um, you know, nothing jumps out at me, you know. Wires are still nicely bundled. Everything looks fairly original. Um, somebody has stuck LEDs in it, which you can barely see them. They've got them so damn dim. Um, I'll redo those, and I'll actually have the LEDs then will be hooked up to the dimmer circuit. Um, yeah, you can see a melted wire there. Somebody was doing it. They got pretty, actually, a fairly crappy job. <laughs> you can see the exposed wires down in here where they hooked up the LEDs. So, we'll get that taken. Yeah, that right there, it'd be very easy to short the positive and negative out. So, that wasn't very well implemented. But, uh, otherwise, like I say, it looks fairly good. Now, the bottom side, I can see, just like the last one, unfortunately, this one didn't get caught in time to have a uh, electrolytic capacitor change done to it. Oh, actually, well, I still have the radio hooked up and facing up. It's currently hooked up to the signal generator over there. It's outputting one microvolt at, on channel 19. So it does actually have halfway decent receive already with, you know, no alignment done to it yet. Um, it is all frequency a little bit. But uh, I've seen much, much worse <laughs> on old radios. You know, still original. Let me just quick get the antenna unhooked here. The light swung out of the way. The radio flipped over. back down in here and you can see now the electrolytic capacitors leaked out it's leaked out into here I can see you see this traces most of the overcoats already gone off of it and this one so I have no doubt it's also leached down through the two capacitor holes and probably because these are double-sided circuit boards so I have no doubt in my mind that the uh, uh, traces are probably about in the same condition on the other side. So we'll have to see how they how they look once I get to get that out of there. Might need to do some trace repair. Might be able to just clean them up, tin them, and then re-epoxy overcoat them. So we'll we'll see um, see what it looks like. But uh, now this I, I'm going to have to look this up. See these cut traces. I think that is factory on this. Um, the GE Super Bases have gone through a lot of modifications, or I shouldn't say modifications, but updates over their lifespan. And I believe, I, and I, anytime I see diff, you know, different versions of these circuit boards, I always try to write down anything, you know, any of the differences that I've seen and uh, put it with my service manuals. That way, you know, I run into something and there's a problem. You know, a lot of times the manufacturers will, you know, during the life of its production run, they'll make, make changes like this. They'll, you know, clip traces, add tack parts here and there. So, I, I, but I think I have seen this one where these traces were cut before. So, I'll have to just double check on that. And, you know, obviously it does kind of look like it was factory because this diode looks like it's in, you know, here. And the cut is under the trace or under the, the diode, so definitely looks like it was factory done. I just can't be 100% sure, but uh, 
like I say, looks fairly good condition under here other than the trace damage. One thing it's nice to see, the core is not cracked for the VCO. The impossible to get <laughs> square hold thin wall core. So, you know, I always suggest, even actually for most techs, as long as the voltage is, when you, you, know, you do your alignment, as long as your VCO voltage is close, don't touch this because if you break that, you're screwed. <laughs> You can't get those cores anymore, and if you must adjust it, just make damn sure that you use the proper alignment tool for it. You know, because anything else, and you'll break it. So this is the proper alignment tool for it. You see, it's a square. It's actually a GC. Uh, I can't even see a model number on this. Oh, there it is. It's on the other end. Yeah, it's GC ninety four forty. So they still make this. So if you work on GE Super Bases, you know, find a GC dealer and uh, order you up some of these. But this is the only tool you ever want to use to adjust this core. So there's just a quick overview of the condition of this one. Like I say, it's actually not bad. Like I say, I've seen a lot of these like that. So we'll get that cleaned up. But uh, otherwise, looks untinkered with. Don't see any modifications done to it. So. That's always a bonus when I can get them un unbutchered.